OK, so let's do some examples. We'll start with nitrogen gas and we'll go through the same steps that we learnt in the last video. So the first thing is to total up the valence electrons. Now we're going to do nitrogen gas, N2. So we have two nitrogen atoms. Uh, nitrogen is group 5. We know it has 5 valence electrons. So with two nitrogen atoms we must have 10 valence electrons in total. So when we get to the end and we've finished our structure we want to have used up 10 valence electrons in the structure. The second step is to look at how many bonds each atom is able to form. Nitrogen, group 5, valence of minus 3, so it forms 3 bonds. So each of these nitrogen atoms is going to want to form 3 bonds. Since there are only 2 atoms, each one of them must form 3 bonds with the other. So I'm going to draw out the skeleton of my molecule like that. This way each nitrogen is forming 3 bonds. Next I check whether the atoms have a full outer shell. Each nitrogen has formed three bonds. There are two electrons in each bond, so that's a total of six electrons for each nitrogen. But it wants eight for a full outer shell, so it does not have a full outer shell. So if each has six and it needs eight, I need to give each nitrogen an extra two electrons. So I'm going to do that by giving each nitrogen a lone pair of electrons, a pair of non-bonding electrons. So each of them now has six bonding electrons and two non-bonding electrons, which is a total of eight. My final step is to check that I've used up the right number of electrons. So I started off with ten from the two nitrogen atoms. If I count up the electrons that I've used up, I have six bonding electrons plus four non-bonding electrons, which is ten altogether. So the electrons in my structure equal the number of valence electrons that I started with. So that's my final structure. Next let's try trichloromethane, CHCl3. So first, valence electrons. Carbon has four, hydrogen has one, and I have three chlorines, each of which has seven, which equals 21. When I total those up, I've got 21 plus five, which is 26 valence electrons to play with. Next I look at bonds. Carbon, which is in group four, will form four bonds. Hydrogen, we know, forms only one. And chlorine is in group 7, which means it has a valence of minus 1, so it likes to form one bond as well. So each of the chlorines is going to form one bond. All right, so carbon forms four bonds, and I have four other atoms which each want to form one bond. So the skeleton structure is going to have to look like this. That's the only way that I can give carbon four bonds and each of the others only one. OK, now I check for the full outer shell. Carbon forms four bonds, each bond gives it two electrons, so it's got eight, so it's fine. Hydrogen has formed one bond, which gives it two electrons, it's also fine. The chlorines, however, have only formed one bond, which gives them two electrons, but they need eight. Now, if you recall, I told you that chlorine was an exception to the rule, meaning that it could accept more than eight electrons. However, the default is eight. So you shouldn't try and give the hypervalent atoms more electrons than they need unless it's absolutely necessary. So we're going to go with the default here. We're going to say that each chlorine needs eight electrons and I can't give them any more bonding electrons so we're going to have to do it by non-bonding. So I'm going to give each chlorine three pairs of non-bonding electrons. Now each chlorine has six non-bonding electrons and two bonding electrons which gives it eight which is a full outer shell. The final step is to check the totals. So I started off with 26 valence electrons, so when I count up the electrons in my structure, I want there to be 26. So I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 non-bonding electrons. That's all of the lone pairs. 18, and then 8 electrons from the four bonds, and 18 plus 8 equals 26. So I have the same number of electrons in the structure as I started with. So that's the correct structure for trichloromethane. OK, third example, boron trifluoride. Valence electrons, boron has three, and there are three fluorines, which are in group seven, so they each have seven. When I total that up, I have 24 electrons to play with. For bonds, boron is in group three, it likes to form three bonds. Fluorine is in group seven, it likes to form one bond. So I have three fluorines and one boron. I'm going to put the boron in the middle and use one bond each to join up the fluorines. Now I'm going to check for 
full outer shells. Boron has access to six electrons. Now remember, boron is one of the electron deficient exceptions, so it's happy with six. We don't need to give it any more. The fluorine, however, it's one of the ones that really needs a full outer shell, and at the moment each fluorine only has access to two bonding electrons, so I'm going to need to give each fluorine three lone pairs, so that it now has six non-bonding electrons and two bonding electrons, giving it a full outer shell of eight. And then we check our totals. So in my structure here, I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 non-bonding electrons, and then 6 bonding electrons, and 18 plus 6 is 24. So I have the right number of electrons, so I'm all good. Okay, last one, a little bit trickier. We're going to do the structure of an ion, a covalent ion. So the carbonate ion, although it's an ion and it participates in ionic bonding, Within the ion itself, the carbon and the oxygen atoms are joined to each other by covalent bonds. So we're going to draw this structure, and it follows. we follow exactly the same set of procedures that we did for the neutral molecules. There's just one extra thing that you need to know, and it comes in the first step. Okay, so first we total up our valence electrons as normal. We have one carbon, which has four valence electrons, and we have three oxygens, and each of those oxygens has six valence electrons, because it's in group six which gives us a total of 18. All right, now here's the bit which is slightly different. This is an anion, a negative ion, as opposed to a neutral molecule, which means that it's carrying a couple of extra electrons. Now its charge is two minus, so it's actually carrying two extra electrons. So in addition to the valence electrons from the carbon and the oxygen, we need to add two extra electrons that represent the ion's charge. Okay, from now on we continue as normal. So our total number of valence electrons is 4 plus 18, which is 22, plus another 2, which is 24 electrons. Next step is to look at the bonds. Carbon, we know, likes to form 4 bonds, and oxygen likes to form 2. So we're going to try and draw a skeleton for this ion. Because carbon is the one that forms the most bonds, I'm going to try putting it in the middle. And I only have three other atoms to join it to, so let's start by putting in single bonds. There we go. I've joined up the carbon with the three oxygens. But we know that the carbon likes to form four bonds, and at the moment it's only got three. So I'm going to make one of these a double bond. All right, so now my carbon is happy. It's got four bonds. The oxygen at the top is happy. It's got two bonds. The other two oxygens only have one. But as you'll see in a second, we can solve this with uh, non-bonding electrons, and it's a situation that arises mostly when you're drawing ions. So let's go on and look at the full outer shell. So carbon has four bonds, which means it has access to eight electrons, so it's fine. The oxygen at the top has access to four bonding electrons, because it's got two bonds, so it needs an extra four electrons, so I'm going to give it two lone pairs. So it now has four bonding and four non-bonding electrons, so it's happy. The other two electrons have only formed one bond each, so they only have access to two electrons. So I'm gonna, I, I can't give them any more bonds. If I give them another bond, it will be too many bonds for the carbon, and we just can't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of make, make it up to them by giving them extra non-bonding electrons. So they've each got two. They need another six, so I'm going to give them three lone pairs like that. Now the oxygens are happy. All right, final step is I'm going to check that I've used the right number of electrons. I had 24 to start off with, so I used up 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 non-bonding electrons, and I've got four bonds, so that's eight bonding electrons, which is a total of 24, which is the right number. So this is a correct structure. Now there's one final thing we need to add to this. As we've drawn it, the Lewis structure looks like it's meant to be a neutral molecule. We have to add something that indicates that it's an ion. So what we do is we put the entire structure into square brackets, and we put the charge on the outside like that, 2 minus, to show that it is in fact an ion. So there were actually three things that were different, not one, about drawing this Lewis structure of a polyatomic ion. First, you need to adjust the number of valence electrons to reflect the charge on the ion. If it's a negative ion, you'll have to add electrons. If it's a positive ion, you'll have to take electrons away. Second, 
often with oxygens in negative ions, you'll have to make do with oxygens that have only one bond, even though oxygens usually prefer to have two. This is OK as long as all of the atoms have a full outer shell and you have the correct number of electrons in your structure. And third, you need to put your final Lewis structure in brackets and indicate the charge on the ion. OK, so I'm just going to go through and uh, run through the exceptions again just to remind you. We had the electron deficient atoms, which are beryllium and boron. We had the hypervalent atoms, which are the atoms in period 3 and below, which are able to take more than 8 electrons in their outer shell, but you should always try for 8 electrons as a first point of call. Go for 8 electrons as the default, and if you can't make the structure by restricting them to 8, then you can give them more. Then finally, we have the atoms that must have a noble gas configuration, which are hydrogen, which need two, needs two, and carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, which all need eight. So I'd like you to try drawing these four molecules, uh, drawing the Lewis structures for these four molecules. We've got oxygen gas, which you use for breathing. We've got bromomethane, uh, which used to be used as a soil sterilization agent in agriculture, but was banned in 1999 because it contributed to uh, the degradation of the ozone layer. We've got sulfur hexafluoride, which is a really dense and unreactive gas. And if you uh, search on YouTube, you'll find a bunch of uh, really cool videos that show just how dense, how much denser than air it actually is. And we've got methanol, also known as formaldehyde, which has often been used as an embalming or preserving agent for flesh or uh, biological specimens.